My name is Rudy from Yalta Recumbent. And I'm Tom Floor from Trident Trikes. And this is Gary Solomon. We're in Germersheim, Germany, and this is the Laid Back Bike Report special from Spetsy. Let's go, guys. Woo! Here we are at the uh, opening first day at Spetsy 2017, and we have a crowd coming in. Look at this. People crowding in here. No pushing and shoving, but uh, there's great anticipation, obviously, to see what's going to be uh, at the show this year. Uh, large numbers of people, as we've seen, um, sometimes upwards of uh, 10 thousand people coming over the uh, course of the weekend so Spetsy here it is welcome everyone all right we're here at HP Velotechnic with uh, David and David's gonna talk to us about a product uh, that they're particularly proud of what do you got here David what we have new for 2017 is the Shimano step system which integrates not only the power unit in the in the front but also the DI2 automatic shifting as well which makes the riding ease and comfort for the riders much more enjoyable than what it's been in the past okay now this is is this a relatively new addition this is new for us for 2017 and what we were able to do is work together with the Shimano and to find a, uh, a drive system that works well with our trikes integrating a, a bottom bracket drive unit that works well with our trike frame, which allows the complete foldability and access that people demand from our products. Okay, so this uh, e-assist uh, business, this is really something that is expanding greatly, and I know it, it's become a, a larger and larger part of HP's business. Tell me a little bit about that, if you would. The e-market for us basically started four or five years ago when we started uh, with another manufacturer of e-drive units and we've been involving our system since then. Uh, not only do we have the Shimano step system but we also offer the Ghost Swiss drive system which tends to be more for people performance oriented and also for the adaptive cycling market as well. Hey, I was going to ask you like who the market is for this so you find that uh, that's that's a growing market for the people that especially the adaptive needs part of the market. So performance wise how does that fit in? How does the, e the e-assist work for performance? For performance, we have a, with the Ghost Swiss Drive, we have a unit that goes up to 28 miles an hour or 45 kilometers an hour in Europe. And it provides a better range and fun factor as well. Okay, that sounds good. It's a beautiful looking trike. So now, uh, these are available right now? These are available right now and we're delivering constantly from the factory in Crystal. Can you give me a ballpark figure? Uh, what, what does a unit like this uh, cost? Well, a, the E-Drive unit for the Shimano Steps unit adds about $2,000 to the price of the unit and the uh, Ghost Swiss Drive adds about $2,500 to the price. Okay. And that's HP Velotechnic, so thank you very much, Dave. You're welcome, Gary. Thank you. Okay, hey, we're here, uh, we're here with Neil from uh, ICE, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, a little bit more about some uh, e-assist uh, on their trikes, and we've got a new, uh, a new combination here. So, hi, Neil. Hi. Let's, let's talk about what you have here. What do we have? Uh, well, this is um, first time for us, but uh, Steps has been around for a while, but um, we've had a lot of demand, a lot of inquiry for electric. Electric's really popular now. I think it's getting more and more in America. I think there's a little slower behind Europe. If you look around here at the show, there's electric everywhere. Um, so we've uh, taken the step system. Um, it's not our first electric system. We've used quite a lot of different things over the years, but this is the first thing we will be supplying to the US. Uh, you sell both to the uh, European market and yeah. the US. Is it the same e-assist or is there a difference between yeah, them? Yeah, the, um, the, the units for the European market are a, well, the regulations are different. So the maximum speed, 25 kilometers per hour in the, in the uh, European area and uh, 20 miles an hour for the US market. So there are actually two separate motors for those two markets. So we're gearing up with the 20 mile an hour units for the US, of course. Of course. <laughs> Everybody wants more power, more speed. They do, especially <laughs> in the US, right? <laughs> All right, so tell me how this works. Uh, give yeah. me, kind of uh, close well, in here a little bit. Super, uh, super simple, actually. Um, basically, once the system's on, you just get on and you just pedal. And uh, the power comes on in response to your pedaling effort. 
so really easy to use and really kind of integrated into the ride. You don't really feel like you're on an electric machine and you turn on the power and then you press a button and it goes. You just pedal and it makes you feel like you've got really strong legs. So really nice. Yeah. Very good. Now, does the uh, e-assist system work on all of your trikes? We have yeah. a sprint here. Tell yeah. me about how that... We have um, basically an option for that system to be supplied on the, uh, the sprint, the adventure, and the full fat. Um, we're not doing that on the VTX, which mm, maybe you could say that's kind of... But what we feel is the VTX, it's all about getting the Human-powered performance, yeah. right? You know, it's all about performance, and um, well, if you really must have a motor, what we would suggest, you go for the Sprint or the Sprint X, you can have the carbon seat, all that kind of thing, and um, put the motor on it, and it even folds, so you can, you've got a bit of practicality there as well. And once you've got a motor on a trike, pretty much any trike, it's so easy to ride that um, you're not so worried about the stripped down light weight, you know, that's not really necessary. Right, it's a different experience altogether that yeah. you're after in that case. All right, so uh, these are available right now? Uh, they'll be, uh, we're going to begin shipping um, around the end of uh, June. Um, first drop to us, we have a whole pile of stuff on the way to us. Um, so that will be arriving then and we'll begin shipping them out. But what, about, uh, what about price ranges? What, what, what kind yeah, of price well, range? Um, the step system, Roughly speaking, adds uh, around about two and a half thousand US onto the top of the on the top of the price of the trike. So think of it in those terms. And you can also have it with um, automatic gear shifting, which is a, a nice feature. I think, um, well, I guess the US market, particularly um, people are very used to automatic cars. You know, that that way of thinking. In the UK, you know, we all drive stick, but you know. <laughs> well, tell um, me, that's interesting. So I, I haven't seen that before. So tell me what that's about. Well, the, um, the Alphine 8, this is an Alphine 8 speed hub gear. Um, it is just a normal internal hub gear. But this is, uh, they do a version which is specially made to, to work in conjunction with the Shimano Steps motor. So the, um, the control is through the system and you can set the system to run with automatic gear shifting. So it responds to your pedal cave pedal cadence and torque sensing and uh, so basically you ride along and it puts it into an appropriate the, gear yeah, for the so rate. the most efficient gear for yeah. what you need. Yeah. That's interesting. And as you come to a halt it'll drop it down into the low gear and so you're ready to pull away. So it's you're in not low stuck gear. in a high yeah. gear or the light yeah. or something yeah. like yeah. So happens to us. Really or. easy, you don't have to think about it, you just sit on and pedal. Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah. 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 You can also um, take it over into manual mode so you can override those gear changes, just run it one at a time. Um, you, can probably, you can probably hear the gear shifter. Well, the little servo motor. Yeah, which makes a really nice noise, so yeah. I like that. Anyway, yeah, all nice right. Noise. Turn the volume up on that, folks. You're going to love that sound. So The other okay. feature it's got is uh, integrated lights, so we have an option for a lighting system. And that is really nice because you've got the, uh, because the, you've got the power of the battery, superb lights, and yeah. switch them on, touch the button, and uh, on they go. There we go, so the lights right are Right in front and rear. Yeah, very, yeah, very really nice. Really nice. So we've been running them daytime running, really, so that a little bit of extra Extra safety. visibility. Yeah, yeah. and it's, uh, the battery lasts for ages, so it doesn't, it doesn't cause a problem. Very nice. Yeah. Okay, yeah. there it is. Ice trikes. That's that's Neil, and uh, they are uh, patrons, by the way, of the Laid Back Bike Report. Helped support us to get us here to Spetsy. So, thanks very much, Neil. Thanks a lot. The line extends out the door, outside. Look at this lineup here for opening day at Spetsy 2017. We are here with uh, a famous uh, uh, Velomobile inventor, perhaps the gentleman that started the whole thing. This is Carl George Rasmussen. Carl, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Um, I've been riding from Frankfurt yesterday to here, uh, and I've now been uh, here, I think it is the 22nd. Uh, this is the 22nd, uh, 22nd special, and you've been here every one. Yes, every one with the first one. Yes. And, and you were telling me last year, you did, was it last year that you rode uh, from Copenhagen? What was that? Yes, um, I, I wanted to demonstrate a long, uh, long distance tour, 
and, and uh, we started in Copenhagen and uh, ended here one week later. Uh, and on the way I was camping and it was raining and it was very hot and you remember the weather. Yes, and so those, <laughs> those, those of you who have seen the, uh, our video from last year and the outside part of that video, you know what the weather was like. So that's, that's quite remarkable. May I ask, how old are you? Uh, I am 82. 82. Yeah. Remarkably young looking and I, I can and see why that is. The of this, my uh, companion here, he's 80. Oh, so, 80. Yes, yes. Oh, very nice. Well, let's talk about these the remarkable m machines here. Uh, tell me, uh, if you can, briefly, the story of the Lytra. Well, uh, I usually, uh, I was a glider pilot and I built gliders. So I thought that uh, it should be possible also to make a light vehicle to ride on the road. Uh, and uh, therefore I started to build a, a trike first and then I built the fairing for it. And then I started to, to ride it also long distance. And this was in the uh, 1970s, yes? There was an uh, oil crisis and, and exactly. people were talking about it. was the second oil crisis which inspired me. Uh, it was in uh, 78 years, and already two years later I had the first lighter. And I tested it in Norway, because I thought in Norway it would be a good place to test it. You know the, uh, the um, rally from uh, Trondheim to Oslo? Mm -hmm. And I did that already in 84. So that was a great experience. Let's, <laughs> it, it sounds like it was. Let's, can we talk about the features of the Lytra? Can you go, can you go through real briefly and tell us, uh, uh, tell us about the machine? Um, first of all, I prefer white. <laughs> because when it's hot and the sun is shining, it reflects the sunshine and you have a comfortable uh, climate inside. Inlets both sides. Uh, the vents, uh, uh -huh. Yes, the vents here, yes. And when I did the Paris, Brest Paris, mm -hmm. um, it was uh, also hot weather, so I opened here. Uh, I had uh, temperatures up to uh, 35 degrees centigrade. Uh, and I was uh, just wearing short uh, trousers and nothing else. And then I opened here and I had a very comfortable uh, climate. So that, yeah, that's a wide yeah. range of comfort, isn't yes, it? Because yes, you, you yes. designed these, of course, for colder, rainier yeah, kind yeah, of weather, yeah. and yet you still ride uh, when yeah, it gets very, very warm yeah, Yes, well. you have to cover the whole spectrum. <laughs> what, so what sort, of, uh, what sort of steering mechanism here? Uh, it's a... Uh, in Germany, they call it the Panzer steering. Tank steering, yes, I think. Tank steering. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh -huh. So you, you just—it's very comfortable because you have your hands there. Yes. Anyhow, so you can you can steer with one hand or with both. Very nice. And uh, then you have the brake here, of course. Uh, yes. And you have the uh, the blinker for uh, direction right. indication. Sure. So you see how Velomobiles have developed. Since yes. you came up with the Lytro, now there are a number of companies that are making Velomobiles. Right. What, is your, what is your idea about the current state of development of Velomobiles? Well, if you look at the internet uh, and YouTube, for instance, you'll see a lot of new models coming up. Uh, I'm giving a, a speech uh, uh, this afternoon at 4 o'clock. And I'll show you uh, a group of uh, Venomobiles. I think I have uh, 50 examples. And I think we will see more and more do-it-yourself uh, Venomobiles. Uh, people want, people are individualists. They want it in a very specific way. Uh, you have many different uh, uh, brakes and, and other components you want to try. So I think uh, yeah, there will be more and more do-it-yourself. Do it and of course, that's how it all started. This is a do-it-yourself. It was for you. You started as a do-it-yourself. Yes. And, and so we've come full circle because yes, maybe yes. now you're, they're and just so having other companies build and, it and, for them. I, I think I have not made two exactly equal Lytras. Everyone is an individual. <laughs> yes. it's, it's, uh, very, very nice. Well, Carl George, it's a pleasure to meet you, an honor to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you. We're here at the pod bike booth at Betsy with Hans. And Hans, tell me, uh, tell me what your relationship is to this company. 
My name is Hans Lerup. I'm a supply chain manager with uh, Podbike. Uh, our founder, Per, has been an active Velomobile rider mm -hmm. for more than five years. He has learned the advantages and disadvantages, and the Podbike is the answer to those questions that he has struggled with. So the product has been five years in development. We're now kicking in the overdrive, uh, going, having uh, built the first prototypes and we're now going into the zero series manufacturing with a group of test riders in the Nordics before we uh, launch into full launch the product formally and go into full series production 2018 however we have started taking pre-orders and uh, as of now most of 2000 production is unfortunately already sold but or fortunately but already there, sold. Uh, yes That's very good. Uh, well uh, it's a challenge of so course. our focus now is to deliver the product to the specification right. but there is availability in second half of 2008. All right, for our so, audience that is interested in knowing a little bit more about, can we talk yes. a little about this product? Yes. Uh, from a European perspective, this is a EU legal electric bike. That is very important. Uh, no certification, sorry, no uh, licenses to drive it. it. It will have product certifications as a EU legal e-bike. Uh, you can use uh, pedestrian uh, areas, use it in pedestrian areas, cycle paths and so on and so on. That is the framework. In technical engineering terms, it's an electrical series hybrid, so pedaling creates electric energy through the energy, uh, through the generator, which goes through our uh, patentized energy management uh, system. Uh, there's a series of patents pending, a lot of inno innovative uh, engineering has gone into this. Uh, energy then gets redistributed together with the boost from an oversized lithium ion battery energy package to the two uh, electric motors on the back wheels. So that's the series hybrid, also regeneration for extra power for going up the mountains in Norway regeneration for coming downhill the big mountains bring that energy right back to, to, to use a again a lot of power going back and forth here let's That's take a look at the structure uh, yes. of what we have here so uh, this is a quad so the four wheels yes um, and for stability that is important and this and the suspension what are we talking about there well um, the uh, suspension uh, on the back is combined also with an elevator system so given that it's a very aerodynamic and low ride uh, low drag profile um, uh, in order to make it easier to get in get in and out so it raises and lowers it raises itself within six to eight seconds it raises itself on the elevator easy to get in and out uh, to get a children, a child into a protected child seat here, uh, or extra luggage space, and then lowers itself off, down, and off you go. Very, very nice. Yes. And the steering, this is a little bit unique. So this is like what we would call under seat steering if you were on a recumbent bike. It is under seat, but uh, uh, the actual handles will come higher up and will have much more flexibility in adjustments to uh, the rider uh, uh, than what you see here on this prototype. But it will be under underneath, yes, or on the side, like this. Okay. And, uh, of course, it's all adjustable adjustable to different uh, physiologies, different sizes of people uh, sure. by adjusting the pedaling, uh, pedal uh, generator position, adjusting the steering, the seat and so on. So okay, so uh, 2018 is your projected time for those people that have pre-ordered? The pre uh, official launch will be second quarter 2018, yes. Okay. Uh, after uh, we have an initial group on the road. That, yes, right. and uh, pre-orders to date 
have filled up well into the second half of 2018 deliveries. Well, can you give me an idea of a price range for this yes. product? Uh, we are targeting a price of 4,000 euro plus optionals plus sales tax. And your intent at this point is just the European market? They're well, this going to the US at some point? Uh, there are no limits to our intent. Okay. And uh, just to let everyone know, Podbike uh, also supported uh, our trip here to uh, Spetsi, so we thank you very much for that support. We wish yes. you well, and uh, thank you very much, Hans. Thank you, Gary. A pleasure. Okay. We're uh, here uh, at Tramvelo with Andreas. Yeah, hi Gary. Hello. Great to meet you here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, mainly we run a bicycle shop for special bikes, uh, recumbents, tandems, one of the bigger shops in Germany, I guess top five or so. Um, uh, we are in the very south of Germany, near Munich. Uh, celebrating our 20th anniversary this year. Almost as old as Spetsi is, huh? Yeah, almost. As you can see here, <laughs> we do something else. This is something uh, that came to us. When you deal with recumbents, yeah. there comes the day people ask for safety flags or something like that. And so we discovered these flags in the US. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, from Purple Sky. Uh, Dan and Rochelle Peters producing these beautiful flags and so we became the exclusive importers for the European market. Uh, but one day after three or four years they told us they want to close down their business. Ah. Uh, this was uh, not very nice for us because we... You were selling this, a lot of flags. At this point yeah. uh, flag business began to work for us. So we had a bit of discussions and in the end we bought the whole thing and started uh, to build up the whole production here in Europe. And this is something we are proud of. It's all European made, Germany and neighbor countries. Uh -huh. uh, all handmade, high quality, hand sewn, laser cutting. Uh, even the poles here, you can see here our pole set. Even the poles we use are made for us. And yeah, it goes through, uh, through the fabrics and the reflective material. So. What we do is really high quality. So you have different size of yeah. flags here and what streamers? Tell me yeah, about the Yeah, as you can see, uh, we have three sizes. Yeah. This is the medium size, this is the L one, and you have also a small size and uh, the three sizes in different colors, Yeah, as you can see here. Uh -huh. uh, in the set is always the flag itself with these uh, reflective materials. Uh, nothing is glued, all is hand sewn. Um, and what we call, uh, or what you streamer. would call a streamer, yeah, yeah. we call it Flatterband in German. Flatterband? Uh, because mm HP -hmm. Velotechnik didn't like the word streamer because yeah. they have a fairing called also streamer. They call this, yes, yeah. they, I noticed uh, that yesterday, yeah. Yeah, and it all comes completely together in a set with a, a detachable pole set, two piece pole set, the streamer, and some clips to fix the flag or okay. on the pole uh -huh. yeah and, and you also have it. some accessories here does that yeah uh, this one here is something <laughs> new we have you can see it also mounted yeah. on the flag here it's our flag light also something people are asking for so we try to find a solution it's also a top quality uh, light from Bush and Müller. We worked together, they made a custom uh, cables for us. Also very interesting how, to, how we mount the cables. It's mm -hmm. a self-adhesive housing of the a hose, which is So it hides the cable and secures yeah, it. Yeah, and nice. it comes all complete in a set uh, with uh, different cables. Uh, with connectors also made by a professional uh, cable builder. <laughs> okay. um, everything you need to connect it to your standard rear light. So if you have a dynamo or a battery light system on your bike with a rear light, you can connect it to your rear light and then you run the rear light and our flag light together. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. And. Uh, 
That's so. That's the majority of what you do. Do you sell it? To, do you sell to U.S. markets too? Yes, we do. Uh, so now it's going back from yeah, U.S. here. Yeah, now, now it's the it, other way around. The circle uh, has closed. Yeah, yeah so. you can uh, buy or people can order our flex uh, at TerraCycle now. I was going to ask you. So if people want to know yeah, more, we have the tramwilu.de or bikeflex.de, and there you get all the information uh, you need, and you can order online. Andreas, thank you so much. And Great. Andreas, thank also you. a supporter of the Laid Back Box Report to help us get here, so we appreciate that as well. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We are here with uh, the major sponsor of the Laid Back Bike Report special from Spetsy. It's Tom Floor. Hey, Tom. Hey, Gary. It's uh, good to see you guys again. We're proud to be the main sponsor this year and hopefully for years to come. Um, we, we have some new stuff this year, and uh, you know, this year we're, we've really specialized uh, in the fat tire quad, and we built two things just for this show. Uh, we're prototypes, and we're going to start with this one. All right, this what is, do we have? This is a three-way suspension quad fat trekker with a new Vinci. So uh, a couple of new things we've done. First is front suspension, which we've never done before. This is going to be uh, retrofitable to any model that we use the front kingpin on. Um, we have two-way rear suspension now. We're, we, have, we have suspension this way, and then we have lateral suspension this way as well so that if you're going over you know rocky surface you can, you can do that we love the action shots the time this is one we, we finally figure out how to put a new Vinci on the back of one of these things too it is mounted a little bit off center uh, the whole rear is aluminum now uh, so it's, it's it's almost the same weight as the uh, three-wheel fat trekker uh, we didn't we didn't really gain that much weight this will also be an option for anybody who bought a three-wheel fat trekker just to bolt this rear on the back so uh, we're really going, you know, modular. And every, every time, every time you make an advance in your products, I know that your customers immediately get a hold of you. It, Can it, I it's retrofit? Already, it's right? a, it, and it's already been all over Bent Rider. <laughs> I, I, I seem to be on there in Germany, spending half my time on Bent Rider because we posted this on YouTube the other day. So one of the things that we're really interested in are these Kenda Gigas tires. Um, they're available in 26 inch in the rest of the world. As far as I know, we're the only ones that have them in 20. Kenda gave us these to test it. We, we've been putting them on the terrain 20s uh, as well as fat. And it's, you know, the, the problem with 20 inch fat over the years is there's never been a good quality fat tire in 20. And, and this is, these are just outstanding. Uh, and, we, and we are much happier with these than, than the old uh, Chinese tires that were out there. So, so the uh, fat quad, three-way suspension, Da Vinci, whatever you want to call it. We, we have no idea of the price because everybody wants to know that about 3900 as it says. We, we were trying to work that out over breakfast. Uh, close. And when are we talking about? Uh, I ask you this all the time, and I always get the the shrug. So, um, what do you tell me? This fall. This fall. It, it, I mean, we can. We 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 have a couple bugs to work out, especially with the front suspension. Uh, but there's no problem making these. Uh, you know, it, it's here. It's it's it, it's certainly not vaporware. It's uh, ridable, and and it's, it's a really a fun ride. So. Uh, it'll be, it's available electric as well. So We're here with uh, Rudy from Yauta, and he's going to tell us a little bit about this amazing looking machine. What do we have here, Rudy? We have a model, uh, model lure system, so you can change it in any uh, uh, other uh, configuration. Conf configuration that you want, uh, like a tempo or a delta or a quad or uh, a tandem. So if you have uh, the add-on for the tandem, uh, you only need a quad, and you can make a tandem quad, etc., etc. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, this is a really unique kind of a, a unique kind of experience for people. So th this is totally modular, and so you would start out buying one particular model, maybe yes. a quad yes. or whatever you like, yeah. and then as your needs may change, yeah. you just add on the other module. So yeah. uh, um, this is a, a, a way to save a little bit of money and get a lot of flexibility. Yeah. Yes. Yes, and also if, if you want to change the wheels later on, you can put on first the normal wheels with normal tires, like Big Apple or so, and then later on you can uh, get the wheels off and you put fat wheels on it. And then you can do, uh, have 20 inch uh, or 26 inch wheels. Okay, and like so many uh, of the other products that we're seeing here, this comes with an e-assist. Is this uh, yeah, is this something? Yeah, possible. Yeah, if you want to have an e-assist, it's possible. Then you have in, ho in Europe you have 250 watts uh, motor, and uh, we uh, I changed uh, some while ago the the steering. That uh, bigger people can go on more easily. 
Yeah, so what's, tell me what this is about. It's, uh, this is uh, the handlebars. Uh, if you want to sit down like this, one second, you'll put your hands here and you'll have easy So it's more for assistive uh, yeah, kind yeah. of... Uh, yeah, if you have knee ease. problems or a hip problem or whatever. Okay, you know? that makes some sense. Yeah, so you can uh, change it uh, uh, with helping hands, etc., etc. Et yeah. And also the steering. You have uh, the wider steering and also the closer steering, what is behind you. That's another steering. Uh -huh. uh, and you have also the steering when you sit like this, in the normal recumbent. So all, all those choices. Yeah. Now, now um, available right now. Can we get yeah. this right now? Yeah. Yes. And so point. if people want to find out more about all this whole modular setup and how much it costs, where do they go? It's uh, 2,700. Oh, there's the answer for that one. Yeah. And, and where do they where do they go for more information? A website? Uh, the website uh, jouta.lichtfietsen.eu, or you go to tridentrike.com. Okay. And of course, uh, all of these links will be in the, the description section of the YouTube video, so yeah. we'll have those for people. So, okay. Thank you very much, Rudy. You're welcome. Okay, we're here at the Ecleta booth or Ecleta booth. Uh, with uh, Kaz uh, from TerraCycle. So what do we have uh, to show today? Yeah. Um, well, they have one stand here that has kind of a, an array of our, our idlers, our uh, different sport, they're the kind of the lower cost idlers as well as the, the elites, the uh, higher, higher cost, uh, more finely manufactured, uh, all aluminum, uh, titanium cogged idlers, um, as well as a, a different array of mounts here to to mount lights or computers or whatever it is, uh, kind of wherever you need it. So here in Europe, uh, Europeans would buy through Ecleta to get the TerraCycle products. Um, and all, do you, is that are they the exclusive distributor? Is that how it works, or do are there bicycle shops that also? No, yeah. So Ecleta handles all the the shops. Uh, so everything that comes from us to Europe goes through them. Uh, with very rare exceptions of some OEM deals going to maybe a ma uh, Velomobile manufacturer here or there. Okay. It's just nice to have a presence here and uh, and to see TerraCycle here all the way over in Germany. So TerraCycle also is a uh, is a patron uh, of the Laidback Bike Report here at Spetsy, so we appreciate your support. <laughs> Pat is always a great supporter of ours, so thanks a lot, Cass, for telling us about the, uh, the products you brought here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're here with Stefan here at Katanga, uh, a good friend and supporter of the Laid Back Bike Report. And Stefan, uh, this year you brought uh, a couple of velos that you can actually try out and ride so that people can see. So tell me a little bit how that's going for you this, this year. Yeah, the, we noticed last year that uh, we always brought bikes which were also had uh, sold and we couldn't tie them out. But uh, many people who come here want, want to tie them out, which is understandable. <laughs> And uh, so this bike is just to to uh, to try out, and uh, we just had a guy of one meter ninety-seven centimeters in it, and he fitted well, and he, he went for the drive, and he was he had twinkling eyes when he came back. So that I mean that's a good example. It shows you how a wide variety of sizes of people that can fit. So the the extremes then would obviously that's the tallest guy how about wide so if you're too big is it a problem I'm fitting in here fine but yeah let's say uh, the, the wall is a three-dimensional construction and the body is also three-dimensional sometimes you need to move the body to the front to, to the rear to get it in the critical size at the end can be the shoulder width uh, it's something like 53 centimeters yeah? but you can you can feel the sides of the wall that's not a problem yeah uh, and sometimes you need to, to bring the person more to the front to fit the broader sh shoulders in it. But uh, the wow is something who fits in generally for as well small people as tall people. Yeah. Okay, and production is, do is going pretty well then I understand now, right? So you are able to supply your uh, wows uh, pretty quickly, yes? What's, what's, what's the timeline right now? Uh, yes, the timeline is uh, we are under two months now, so we can supply very well. You, you visited our new premises uh, two months ago. Uh, so you see that we are now on a level where we can produce much efficient, uh, ef efficiently and also faster. So when we receive an order confirmation, in two months we, we deliver. Very good. All right, well, take a look at Lars. Hold that microphone up to your face and tell him if, if I want to find out more about the, this wonderful Wild Velomobile, how can I find out more? 
So uh, if you want to find out more, uh, look to our website, uh, www.katanga.eu. Uh, there's a lot of information there. Uh, but uh, for all the questions you have, you just write us an email and we, we give you an answer. All right. And I would take this for a little spin right now, but it was set up for a uh, basketball player, like <laughs> six foot ten, and I can't even reach the pedals. So, but thank you very much, Stefan. Okay. It's nice thank to see you, you again. Guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, this is Brian Ball, uh, reporting for Layback Bike Report. Here I'm with Nazca. I'm with Hank. How's it going, Hank? Pretty well. Having, having a good show? Yes, so far. Thank yeah, you. Good. Very good. good. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this bike you got here? Yes. Well, um, this is the Gaucho. Most old uh, model, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, Partly because we have it in 24 inch, 26 inch, and 28 inch wheels, mm -hmm. so we can we have quite a range of of, of people we can uh, fit on the on the Gaucho. It's quite a tour. It's really a touring uh, bike. Yeah. yeah, but but it comes in a more high performance version too, though. Some people get it with the skinny 700 C size. True, you can. Uh, we have it in a high racer version as well, mm -hmm. uh, with with racing racing uh, tires. Uh, that's 28 uh, inch, 700 C uh, mm. for America. And does it uh, come with front suspension? Is that an option on it? No, no. Um, for the touring, for the 26 inch bike, we, we do have a, a suspension fork, mm. um, but it's limited. Um, it's it's a problem because of the chain line. We we cannot fit an ordinary ordinary uh, front fork. Okay, and it, and it's uh, optional with full touring racks and. Yes, it's 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 really a touring bike with with these uh, low riders for additional. Um, mm -hmm. So you can carry four four bags like mm -hmm. this. Um, it has a lot of adjustability uh, things. I mean, you can, you can lower the seat, of course, easily. One important thing is you can also alter the ge geometry of the of the bike easily. So I, I can check like that. I can put it higher up, like oh, this. Nice. Or put that it in the most reclined position. That, that's new to me. I didn't remember that they had that. That's yeah. really cool. You can do it without any tools. You can change the, the behavior, actually, and the, mm -hmm. the feel of the bike. Uh, and, and how much does that raise and lower? Like, how many centimeters is that? It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. It's, it's a couple of... It's about three, three or four degrees uh, you're... Okay. You're All right. And I don't know if it's coming across in video, but... Uh, Nazcas are so well made. They're just gorgeously built bikes. I've, I had one years ago, and I always said it was the one of the best built bike I've ever owned. They just look like jewelry. It's a very, very pretty bike and a very great product. It's all the, the classic bike manufacturer, which, I mean, like this, it's all it's all traditional bracing, mm -hmm. bracing. Yeah. So it's it's foam molybdane, but very traditional techniques. But but mm -hmm. it's it's well done. It's, it's great. It's, there are not so many companies uh, anymore that can do the, this kind of of work. Yeah, and they're all they don't do all the handmade anymore. Yeah. No, this is all handmade in the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. uh, only the al aluminium parts that are from Taiwan, but the frames they are completely manufactured in the Netherlands. All right. Well, well thank you very much, Hank. I appreciate it. Yeah, Hope you have welcome. a good show. It's good thank to you. see you. We're here at Stein Trikes uh, with. Uh, an old friend, uh, Nadja again. How are you doing, Nadja? I'm fine, thank you. How are you doing today? Doing great. It's good to <laughs> see you again. So we have um, a rather um, unusual trike here with subdued colors. Uh, yeah. Tell me, what do we have here? We have a fat trike. Um, so it's a wild one and fat version. So um, it's mostly for the off-road. So if you drive on the, on the beach, for example, or in the woods or yeah, wherever you want to, it's not not even for uh, the roads. It's more off-road. More of an off-road type of fun uh, trike to do. All right, now uh, so th let's go back to the colors here. So, is this the standard? Is this what you're going to get when you order this fat trike? Can you can you have some choices here? What's the what's the deal? You have the choice you want. So um, you can have it in this colors, so everybody can see you from 100 meters uh, away. <laughs> but you have, uh, you can have it also in the normal colors. So black, red, blue, whatever you want. So that's the good things with with our bikes. You can uh, have it as you want them. All right. Let's talk about the suspension on this. Can you tell me what kind of suspension it has? Front, back. Yeah, front and back okay. suspension. 10 centimeter meters so it's the the yeah the best a lot of a lot of travel so yes. that if you go off-road it'll yeah. be good and then an electric assist tell me about is that standard is that uh, optional and how does that work with this 
it's optional so you can have it with an engine and you can have it without the engine um, uh, without okay you have it uh, you have it, your own uh, power and with the engine you have even more power <laughs> a, a bit more <laughs> very very good so now uh, these are available right now uh, not yet. It's a prototype, so it's in uh, under construction. W when might it be available? Do you know yet? Uh, not yet. Not really. So, so you, uh, you need to be lucky. Uh, you need to be checking with the website, I guess, I right? Should. And that would be uh, Bike Revolution. So www.bikerevolution.at. Oh. Thank you, Nadja. Have a good day. You too. <laughs> Oh, that's just... <laughs> 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 okay, Thomas Seider here, Stein, Stein trikes, right? Clear the way. He is about to make a jump. Here we go. Here we go. No! Woo! Thomas Seider. Oh, here he comes. Whoa! Oh! <laughs> here he comes for the last round. Look out! Whoa! <laughs> there you go. Instead of this, you can order from us 24-inch normal MTB wheels. And then it's so fast like the normal wild one. It's easy going, 30 km per hour, easy pedaling. And the most important difference. Yeah. It's really handmade in Europe. From four people in 40 working hours per frame. Then the color in our house, high-end powder coated from Tiger. And then Lissy, chief mechanic. They make all from parts to a trike and then they deliver. Nice. And 90% we sell directly, 10% through dealers. Through dealers. Yes, yes, yes. Very and nice. So, Very nice. Yeah. Very good. Thanks again. Thanks for doing Okay. Yeah. Well, this is the e-bike parkour, the uh, the electric bike uh, test track here at Spetsy. Um, a very unique setting. This is uh, this is uh, the ruins of an old uh, fortress, and uh, the background is spectacular. Uh, and so it's a great place for them to ride. Uh, as you can see, uh, beautiful greenery, and uh, they get to see the historic uh, nature of the area as they as they go through. So. Uh, a really unique feature here at Spetsy. We're here with uh, Harold uh, at uh, Spetsy, and he's got something unusual that uh, you've built. Yes. All right, can you tell us about it? It's a Stirling engine, which, uh, which is charged with pressure. And normally on the Stirling, Stirling engine, you have the problem uh, that the uh, charge pressure will go out of the engine. You have to keep it tight. And so I have this type of seal. It's um, rubber from a bicycle tube. Uh -huh and I make it moving. Uh, you have this lever and it bends. It's not turning like an axis and so you can seal it completely airtight with the bicycle tube and keep the pressure inside the engine. No, 
Oh, no, it's fine. And then you can turn off the gas and the heat that is stored in the engine keeps it going. And so it's how long will it run? Until this is cold. A few seconds. Okay. It's uh, not a big mass, so it not much heat is stored. So this is mo mostly a demonstration model. Of you have four cylinders instead of one. And you have a big burner down here to heat the four cylinders. And the water cooler here. And you have this mechanism with the levers to couple the four cylinders and bring the power to the wheel. And it works? Beer. And it works ah, out, it, it's, it, ah, it's not powered by beer. It's not powered by beer. It's Since Germany, I thought maybe it was powered by beer. It was powered by beer. We're working on set. We're here at Inner City Bike with Yimta, and uh, he's going to tell us a little bit about uh, this beautiful Velomobile. What do we have here, Yimta? Yeah, it's a uh, DF, the, the large size. The XL? XL? Yeah, the XL. Oh, it should also fit me. Uh, uh -huh, of course. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's especially a uh, nice one with, with uh, the carbon you can see. It's, uh, we made it especially for the show here, to show to the people, but people can also order it. What are the special features of, of the DF that, that uh, make it different than some of the other Bellmobiles? Uh, the DF is, uh, is lightweight, so it's 24 and a half kilo, uh, but it's, it's very stiff, especially when you go uphill, the, the drivetrain, you feel every pedal stroke you make. And uh, yeah, it's, it's also meant for all day use, the chain is protected against dirt. You see it inside. The, the wheels are in wheel boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, uh, luggage room inside. Uh, I, I came here with my DF from, from the Netherlands. Did you? Okay. It's two days cycling, but uh, I like to do it. And it's beautiful. Yeah. The Lars is going to get a shot in there. Special details on the DF. For instance, uh, we have a we have a crank set. And it, it has a low Q factor, so your legs are you don't you don't cycle wide leg. It's good it's good for your knees. It feels good, and it saves room in in the, in the valley where you right. can make it. Gives you more space. Yeah, than that. yeah. And you still have uh, a derriere, and it fits two chain rings. So small details, but that's it's, what it's yeah. made. That's made up of small details. You isn't only it? find it in the DF. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Very nice. So now, what other models do you have? Is there something new coming out with the DF do you, that you... Yeah, there's a, it's riding around here. We made a prototype with the four wheels. Uh, what's, is that gonna, what's that going to be called? There's no name for it. It's not DF4. Or... Could be. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we we're went... looking for suggestions. Yeah. If you want to write in and let yeah. us know. Yeah. We'll Our four wheelers, if you have the same width, you can have more corner stability. And if you, uh, if you make it right, you have between the rear wheels, you have a nice luggage bo box to take a dog with you or a child. Or my colleague likes to take a crate of beer home, it also fits. 
Yeah, I understand that's how you uh, how you determine the size of your um, uh, of your carrying capacity is by how many cases of beer. Is that how they do it? Ah, uh, there's some competition in it, but <laughs> it's it's just for fun. Of course, of course. Yeah. And so the the uh, the four wheeler then that's a prototype. Is the is it a serious uh, product? Or is it something that you're pretty sure you're going to produce? Yes, or? yes. But the, the prototype we can show it later. It's just made without the molds, so it, it looks kind of ugly, but, but just. Everything is different, the drive strain is different, so we wanted to make real good tests with it. Not just driving it and downhill and with luggage and see. Right. And yeah. so do you have some projection on how long it will be? When, when would you anticipate that would be available? It's very hard to say. It always takes a year longer than you say. <laughs> then I would say <laughs> end of the year, but probably. Okay. But, but next year. Probably maybe a serious product, maybe we this time show, next year. We should show one who's really made, like it should look like, made in a mold. And Let's see how can it goes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is the uh, DF, and we talked a little bit about the DF uh, four-wheeler that's out there. Oh, this is it. Okay. It's uh, great corner stability. You still can tip it over. We tested it too. <laughs> yeah, that's important <laughs> enough. But it has a special drivetrain. There's a roll-off gear in between. You, have, you still have a 10-speed cassette in the rear, so you have 140 gears. That's not what you need, but there's a very wide spread b between your uphill and speed downhill, and you still have small steps. Yeah, yeah the luggage room doesn't open yet. It's, and this, this, is all ma this is made of, of a DF body. And and then expand it out. Yeah, huh? yeah. It looks simple, but it isn't. <laughs> I know nothing of what you do is simple. I know. Yeah. Very good. Well, we look forward to seeing a more polished product maybe next year. Yeah, at that. When, it, when it's painted like that, yeah, for instance, we'll it's, 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 it's yeah. very yeah. different. But the shape will also be nicer. Nicer too. Okay. Thanks again. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah. We're here uh, with uh, Beul from uh, EC Velo, and it's a very interesting looking Velo mobile. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, this machine? Yes, uh, this is our newest design. This is a Cabrio one with an open top uh, canopy, but uh, we have also a closed one. Uh, in the Challenger, there is a normal Azub trike. We bought it from uh, directly from Azub, from Czech Republic, and uh, we made the shells in uh, Slovakia and the uh, complete assembly is done in Hungary. Ah, okay. So it's built upon an Azub trike? Yes, yes. Uh, actually, this is built on a trike on 26 inch. So in the real wheel is a 26 inch wheel. But uh, the normal classic one or, or the carbon one is a, uh, is a normal trike on 20. Uh, we can uh, offer the tracks with uh, e-assist or without e-assist. Uh, also, a pinion can be an uh, option as a gearbox. Uh, anyway, normally it is with a stammer drum, uh, drum uh, brake. brake. Yeah. Uh, but uh, we can offer uh, disc brakes also, Tektro disc brakes. Uh, and we have a lot of options like uh, these plates. Uh, or a carbon seat or uh, actually we have about uh, five or six different colors but in the future you can uh, order as as you want uh, okay. in, from the RAL, RAL codes and if people want to know more about the C, the EC Velo uh, how can they find out more uh, they can find more information at www.ecvelo.com and um, yes, <laughs> that's, that's the place to go. <laughs> so, okay, thank you very much. Welcome. Uh -huh. thank you. We're here with uh, David at the Cycles JV Fanu booth, and um, we have uh, a new Velomobile here that you have. It's uh, the Mosan, and uh, David's going to tell us a little bit about this machine. So, tell us what, what this is about. Um, the Mosan is the new Velomobile from Cycles JV Fanu. Uh, today we are um, showing the, the model as uh, the normal production and last year we showed the first model, so the prototype and now we, are, we, we, do, we did some works uh, inside uh, to be better, to be most efficient um, lots of things uh, like the paint, like the electric system and uh, the mechanic inside. So uh, today we are uh, happy to, 
to show it to you. So, so there are some differences, uh, that, some advances that you've made since last year, and now we have this production model, yes? So you are in production with this now? Yeah, the production is launched, and uh, in one year we are happy to sold 10 models and uh, we are happy to the next, uh, we hope that the next uh, next year uh, will be better. Yes, well hopefully enough people will see this and will be interested enough to contact you and maybe uh, and get them all signed. Can we talk a little bit about what's inside uh, here? What, let's talk about some of the features. Some of so, uh, what, um, yeah. Inside you have a, a normal classic uh, system with a, a Tyler steering system um, with uh, drum brakes uh, standard derailleur, so uh, one derailleur in the front and rear derailleur. Uh, you can you can add luggages in the back. Um, you have a total uh, integrated uh, light system, so you can you can see in the front. Uh, we have daylight and uh, night lights, blinkers. Uh, we have also uh, brake lights uh, on the far, on mm, uh, the back. Yeah, uh, we have also a klaxon. Uh, so all is integrated. It, uh, we sold it with a full system. So you don't you don't need to you don't have to to, to add something else. All is ready to to go on the road. And uh, for for us, it's important to be in security in the night uh, in high speed because with Avelomobile we can go to. Uh, up to uh, 80 kilometers an hour, so we have to be in security. We work uh, for the pilot security with carbon parts to protect the pilots if he crashed. Um, and uh, many things, we have a crash test with the Mulsanne. And uh, it, will, it was very good to find what is the problems with the model, but we don't find it because it's perfect. <laughs> you didn't have any problems. No, nothing, nothing. nothing. Uh, so it's a very safe, very safe velomobile for people we, to. We ride. hope, we that's, hope. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Now, uh, so these are available. If if they're ordered uh, today, how long before uh, the delivery? Six months. Okay. Six months time for that, and you will deliver anywhere, in both the EU uh, and in the states and the US as well. Yeah. So we are we are uh, selling it from France, but we can shipping it. Uh, the first five models uh, were uh, were sold in uh, Finland, USA, Austria, so we can ship it uh, all over the world. Anywhere. Very, very nice. It's a beautiful machine. The style is, is just gorgeous. So <laughs> congratulations on the new machine and thank you very much, thank you David. Too. Uh -huh. Thank you too. Okay, we're here at the Bambook booth <laughs> with Yaros and, uh, and Anton. Right, oh. and uh, we're going to talk about uh, this uh, very unusual-looking recumbent bike down here. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Of course. Uh, first of all, it's a tandem bike, and uh, it's got uh, an electric motor, and of course, it's a trike also. And the uh, most uh, interesting part about it is that uh, it's collapsible. So, because it's a very long vehicle, and if you want to transport it, uh, for example, if you go on vacation, um, you can just fold it together and either bring it into your car or uh, also pack it on the back of your car, which is uh, why we have some... This over uh, here. Yeah, let's, exactly. Let's stay with this for just a minute. Yeah, we'll sure. go over and take a look at that. So tell us about some of the features of the trike itself, besides okay. the uh, obvious... Okay. First of all, uh, it's a full suspension bike. Um, we have uh, a normal uh, coil suspension in the back, and front suspension is a double leaf spring suspension, which is uh, really comfortable. And um, yeah, it's, it's really fun to drive. Okay. People tell us it's, it's kind of like a little bit on uh, cloud surfing. <laughs> it's just couples who want to have uh, a fun ride together. Okay. And um, the deal is that uh, for some couples, sometimes uh, one is faster and the other is not faster. And this is kind of like an argument, like go faster or go slower. And with this one, uh, it's not possible. So they're happy. <laughs> that makes yeah. sense. So. All right, so the, the most interesting feature here is this collapsibility. Uh, yeah. thing. So let's come on over here and let's take a look. Uh, right here we have the vehicle uh, in collapse style and uh, what you can see is that uh, it gets a lot uh, shorter and um, how you do it, it's just like um, unscrewing four screws and uh, then you put it together and it's, it's pretty easy. If you're used to it, you can do it in uh, about five minutes. So. Okay. And so, so this is uh, this is a carrier of some sort. Exactly, that goes it's a, a, a carrier for uh, the back of your car. So um, even if you don't have a big car, you just have to have one of the uh, what's it called again? 
uh, a hitch, yeah. exactly a hitch. And um, yeah, then, then you're good to go. Okay. And if you do have a, some sort of larger van or something, obviously this, this might fit right in there. So. Fit it right in, yeah. It's, it's pretty easy. So now, these are available right now? Uh, yeah, they're available, yeah. And, and do you sell both uh, Europe and US, or just European? Or? Just Europe. Okay. And uh, how about the price range of this? It's about uh, 7,500 euros. Okay. Okay. And uh, this is uh, the normal model uh, with 250-watt um, engine. and. Um, the uh, uh, roll-off uh, gear suspension and uh, yeah, full suspension bike. Good. And I see uh, my favorite color green. It's the laid-back back report <laughs> green. Did you have it? Does does it come in any other colors as well? Uh, no, right now it's just uh, in green. It's well, also you've chosen. Color. You've chosen. If you have one color, you've chosen the right yeah, color. Yeah, so <laughs> very good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. We're here at the Ventisid booth at Betsy with Bart. And uh, Bart's going to tell us a little bit about uh, maybe the history of, of this uh, fine padding that, uh, that so many recumbent riders uh, have, have, have purchased and used. Uh, Bart, tell me what was uh, the beginning of, of this? Um, just finding the material and having the same bed or the wet bag what every recumbent driver has. So I found the material and I just started to make something out of it. And when was it? How long have you been in business? That's, I started, I think, in 95, okay. so something, yes. and we started our business. We I, Actually, the first time I tried to give the idea away to somebody started up, so we started actually in 2003, I think, okay. and company. And you started by making, did you start by making recumbent uh, padded yes, seats? we started with recumbent, that's, that's the easiest thing, yeah. uh, recumbent drivers sit on a lot of internet, so they are easy to find. So you started out selling individual to individual recumbent riders, right. and then uh, I assume at some point you started selling to the various uh, manufacturers. We, yeah, we have Cyclevision, of course. Yeah? You've you heard of it, and it used to be very big, Cyclevision, one of the biggest in the world. And on Cyclevision, we sold it, and once, I think, in 2004, five. afterwards, a lot of manufacturers came, a lot of dealers came, and they bought the whole bunch what we had. And that got you going. And All right. Started. Uh -huh. So uh, tell me for um, for perhaps some uh, recumbent riders who have never heard of the Venticit and, and tell us what's the advantage? What what does this do for them? Um, it's very long lasting. Yeah, that's we hardly don't get any replacements. Um, it's um, yeah, you, it's ventilating, of course. It lets the water through. It doesn't absorb the water. So in summertime, it's cool because you get some ventilation. In the wintertime it's warm because it's mostly air. So even if you go to sit on it with a wet bag, yeah, it's, you dry up. And if you really sport, yeah, everybody sweats. Right, so comfort uh, for padding, comfort to keep the moisture away. So That's right. It makes, it makes it very, very nice. And, and what the other event, it damps the, the small vibration a bit. So um, what's, uh, that was from PDX. Uh -huh. You know them? Uh -huh. He told me that's the poor man's um, suspension. Suspension. Right. That's a poor man's suspension. Because that's right. I mean, the padding is, in a way, a suspension. It's a suspension. Right, suspension. Right. That's right. Okay. Very good. So, um, so the, the person who's looking to buy this can go to their recumbent uh, bike shop and, and buy them. That's right. Uh, and they can also buy them direct? Yes. We have a web shop. Not all the models are on our website, but you can order them straight away from all places of the world. And, and tell me what that tell me what that website is. Fantasy.nl or fantasy.com. Okay, there you go. Bart, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for. We're here with Arved uh, at the Toxi booth uh, at Betsy, and we're going to talk about uh, one particular product. Uh, and what is this product? Well, the LT is um, one of our most selling products because it's very. Um, uh, it's mu multiple use. You can you can have it for all day commuting, as well as for touring. And uh, we we have it as a foldable frame if you like. We also have it as a pedal leg, as you see it here. So I see most of your b bikes here are under seat steering. This one obviously is under seat steering. Yes. Can it be configured as an over the seat steering as well? Yes, yes, it can. But if if you like above seat steering. Then we should we should talk about the, <laughs> the flight because this is made for for this type of steerer. Okay, all right. And it's 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 even even a little bit shorter, and especially this is foldable frame in general, 
so you have a very very uh, small package right and I see that the seats are a little different as well between the two of them yeah this is this is more upright so you have you have a wider seat which is more comfortable for this and this is more decline which is more sportive this is this is more for city rides uh -huh. Uh -huh. because I, I this is my my personal opinion uh, this steerer is, is for longer longer rides is not as comfortable as the lower one right, because right. You, you're very can feel very comfortable. Okay, now do you sell uh, both in Europe and the U.S.? Uh, what what, what where, where's your market? It's it's most mostly it's it's Germany, it's uh, Swiss, it's and to the to the U.S. We, we don't sell very much because we have no dealers there. So makes we, it difficult. We have, for we have, we, yes, we ha we have to sell directly, which is possible, which we do as, as well as to to Australia and to Japan, but uh, it's it's not not that much. It's not common for you. All right, and then how about some price ranges? Uh, what what kind of money you're talking about? Uh, I know there's different. We talk yeah, about the different configurations, it, but give me an idea. It depends on the configuration, but uh, if we see the LT, it starts from two thousand three hundred euro, and then it depends. Uh, if it's if it's a Pedelec, you, you we can we can say about four thousand, and yeah, fold, okay. foldable is is uh, three hundred euro more. Okay, and then the Elite is the same sort of price range. Yes, it's it's almost the same range. It's only only a different style, but it's the same range. Okay. Also depending it depending on configuration. All right. All right, Arvid. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right, we're here with Teo from Velomobile NL. And uh, this year we thought we'd take a look at a different uh, Velmobile that is uh, manufactured by this fine company. And I believe we're talking about the Quest. So can you tell us a little bit about the, the Quest? Well, it's our classic uh, model. We, it's the one we started with back in 99. And uh, we've produced over 800 now. And still, still a strong, good Velmobile. You know, competitive. This is, uh, I think, the the largest seller, certainly in the in the U.S. Is, is that right? Yes, uh, Blue Velo in Canada has has produced them and has resold them for us for for a long time, and now we sell them direct. And uh, yeah, it's what are the features of the Quest that you think make it uh, so popular? Uh, it's it's a, it's versatile. It's it's fast, but it's also it it has a lot of luggage space. It's also comfortable. You you can you can it's it's like a chameleon. You can you can make it into a racing machine, but you can also make it into a commuting machine or into a a bike travel machine. That's really good. Okay. Can you uh, can we take a look inside the sure. the cockpit here and see what we have? Can tell us a little bit about what we have in here. Well, we have a, a seat. You can. Lift the seat to to get to the luggage space. We have an enclosed drive chain, very important. All wheels are suspended, and all wheels are single-sided mounted, so you can always quickly change tires and 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 inner tubes, which is really important if you want to ride all winter. Okay, and the drive chain. So what sort of uh, what sort of drive chain do you have here? It's a regular derailleur system, three times ten. Uh, yeah. But all fully enclosed. That's also you can you can drive uh, thirty thousand to forty thousand kilometers on a, on a chain and a cassette in a, in a Quest, which is really good. Right, because it doesn't get dirty, so yeah. it, that it it stays clean and and, and strong. Now, um, a lot of the manufacturers that we've talked to here last year, certainly or so, uh, are talking about e assist. So this is a big thing everywhere. How is that a big part of your business? Uh, How does that fit in? Well, e assist is is a very small part because. We really like to concentrate on developing Velmobiles and making them fast without e-assist. And but a lot of our customers they put in like a Bafang motor or or such. And uh, but we we stay away from it because we want to concentrate on on making the Velmobiles fast without e-assist. And then when they put it in, it it really adds something because some Velmobiles they are so big and heavy and they have e-assist, but they're not faster than a Quest without. Right, and I think uh, your customers tend to be performance oriented, maybe not necessarily the kind of people that are going to put that e-assist in, although you have a wide variety of customers. 
Exactly. The people, especially people who live in hilly areas, they can really benefit from e-assist. But also the regulations in the Europe make it difficult because you cannot uh, assist uh, over 25 kilometers per hour without having uh, a, 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 an approved bicycle with a, with a license and with a insurance and a helmet. So that makes it difficult. Absolutely. Okay, beautiful machine. Let's just uh, finish up. Um, last year we did chat about the Quattrovella. It was a prototype mm -hmm. uh, at the time, and now you've gone into production. So can you tell me a little bit about how, how well that's doing for you? It's going very well. We've, we've delivered 30 Quattrovellas now, and we still have four, 40 in order. So we're, this year we're very busy with that. I, I saw a video with uh, Josef Janning, uh, and he was... Uh, he was demonstrating the um, the capacity, the carrying capacity, and uh, yeah. do you do you recall uh, exactly how many uh, cases of yeah. beer that was? Uh, t Twenty six uh, six packs of beer he put into a Quattrovello. That's amazing, and uh, he's a he's a great uh, 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 well spokesman for the Quattrovello. Yeah, velomobiles in general, and yeah. especially he loves the Quattrovello. And uh, unfortunately, not here this year. I know he had uh, other yeah. obligations. Yeah. I think so. We miss him. He is. It is. Theo, thank you so much for okay. talking to You're us. Welcome. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. We're uh, here with Helga from Radewerk uh, here at Spetsi and uh, the manufacturer of the Milan. And uh, there have been some changes in the manufacturing process and location and a little change to uh, the Velomobile as well. So we're going to talk uh, to Helga about that right now. So hello Helga. Hello. <laughs> nice to see you again. So um, tell us a little bit first of all about what has changed with the manufacturing of the Milan. I think you've moved and, and that sort of thing. Not, tell us about that. Not all, all uh, models we built, only the uh, Milan SL. We moved last year to uh, Romania and now production starts and this is the um, first show model from Romania, perfectly done. Uh, the work is not so expensive in Romania, so they can spend more time to make it perfect. It's uh, not possible to make such, such, yes, if you build a car, you need 11 hours for a car. And if you would want to build a Velomobile, it's more than... 120 hours in Germany and now they spent about 160 hours but the work is not so expensive and that, that's why we moved and it becomes better and the price goes down. Uh, yes the LEDs for you can... Uh, that's what, what's uh, an extra? You have to spend much money for, for it uh, before and we have also so... Uh, <laughs> One thing is this inside. That's a front boom, and yeah, we, call it, we call it tuba. Ah, I heard that. <laughs> and it was fixed in the front and makes more stiffness. And it's this also for it's not only one little point. It's a big point, and all the power moves better to the body. So we have no, not so much trouble yeah. with with movement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's stiffer. It's a little stiffer. Yes. It's also it's also the future. Uh -huh. um, show how, it's, uh, how it should go yeah. in the future. It's for the rear swing arm, and it's very much. Uh, there's a, we have very much volume, and so it becomes also very stiff, mm -hmm. and it's easier to change the tire in the back. You can move it away because it's only from one side fixed and yeah, it's better yes. for, for customers mm -hmm. if they have a problem on their, their ways to the job or on their journeys. <laughs> okay. And for this part we need a special hole in the in the in the body. Mm -hmm. That's how you can uh, access. Yes to, you, and it's easier to to do the uh, the railer. Yes, all these things you have to drive the, the screws and yes, yes and it's, it's, that's better. And we, yes. we, we you have a little carbon fiber access yes, panel to cover it. It looks nice. And you, but you have yeah. to <laughs> line it up. Right, yes. right, right. <laughs> Very good. And so now these are already in production? Yes, it, they, right uh, now they're they are, available. They from managed to make uh, two models each month, so not so much. We also want to produce some in Germany for 
the special wishes of the customers, but main production should go to Romania in future. Okay, so, and I remember last year I asked you how long it was before someone who ordered would be able to get the Romobile, and you said it would be about the same length as a lady who was having a baby about uh, nine months. That, yes. So is that about what sometimes you're going to be Sometimes we promise nine months, but sometimes it becomes very late, like an elephant, 12 months. Yeah, not a and human pregnancy, but an elephant pregnancy. Yes, <laughs> and, but we expect in the future that it will be, uh, go down to six months. Six uh, months is what you're aiming time. for. Yes. So. All right, very good. Thank you very much for talking to us yes, again this thank year. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> We're here with Eva Maria and uh, Ivaria on top, and this is a very unique concept that we just uh, came upon. Uh, hello. Hello. So tell me a little bit about uh, what you manufacture here in your company. Um, this was my idea to make um, wearing my helmet for me for myself attractive, and therefore um, I uh, made this concept. You can wear it. Uh, on most of city helmets because um, um, yes I, I show it to you um, they are inside mm -hmm. um, with a sticky material and there you have your helmet maybe it has a shield but you can take it off um, because in case of an accident it might be dangerous with this uh, shield and uh, with this cover we um, cover the whole helmet um, you can uh, get it in three shapes uh, the one with the uh, large brim as I wear it most liked uh, of um, women with a little longer hair or very large and masculine men because the proportion then is very nice uh, the whole production I do in uh, Germany in factories where handicapped people uh, employ it oh, nice. Yeah. Now, so let's say a young lady like Marianne here comes to you and yeah. says, I would like to try one of these. Can we pick something yes. out that you have here maybe? Um, that if would? you would yeah. Uh, yeah. put your head, you know, um, I find uh, these, these helmet uh, maybe fits you. Uh, this label inside this white one shows you where the back side is. So ha you have an orientation for first of all. You can take it there and then you uh, look that the uh, knittings on the side match and maybe it's, yeah. it will, yes ah sizing it up look at that yes and now you would never think it uh, covers a helmet under it it looks like a mm -hmm. nice young lady attractive attractive young lady but not wearing a, um, um, a helmet yes that is good this is good there you have it Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, I thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. There we are. <laughs> <laughs> We're here at Azub uh, with our friend Hans Agala. And hello, Hans. Hello. We're going to talk about a couple of things here today that Azub is working on. And this is something uh, brand new. Uh, so tell us what you have here. So we try here to implement a new shifting system from, or shifters, let's say, mainly from Shimano. They introduced a Metrea, which is uh, basically uh, shifting for, for urban bikes, for yeah, city bikes, with the bullhorn uh, handlebar. But uh, it is a perfect design for using it on a, on a trikes or recumbents with underseat steering, because Compared to a typical road uh, shifters, uh, the, the cables are going, uh, let's say, backward or yeah, just pointing backward. Uh -huh. So you have a very clean design and very ergonomical in this, in this way. It's a dual shift, so you shift and brake with the same lever at least one side. So this is very nice. A uh, solution for under seat steering or of or the trike. It, it's Trying clean and it's also aero, right? I yeah. mean, it looks like it's uh, yeah. pretty aero. And it's like you would play a, a computer game, like. <laughs> it's almost like having so, a mouse on your handlebar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it will be, um, and uh, it's two by eleven. So we, uh, if if we think that the feedback is okay and people like it, we will probably offer it with this 
specification for our 26 inch rear wheel trikes. And when might that be? Oh, pretty quickly. I think it's about, if we do the decision, it's about a month or two. Okay, not too long then. That's really interesting. All right, we have a couple other things to look at. And then uh, now we have something with the e-assist here, right? Yeah, we have. Uh, we were offering uh, the Bionic system, uh, but we started to offer also the, the Shimano steps. I think it's a, it's a product which is quite common in the recumbent industry already. So yeah, we like it. We like it as well, and we will. We are offering it already now. We like it mostly with the Nuvinci hub, but we can do it also assemble it also with the Alfin uh, 11 or 8, yeah, Di2 and so on and so on. So this is something which is quite common, but we are starting to use it. Uh, yeah. There seems uh, to be a great demand now for e-assist. Uh, every Every manufacturer we talk to now is getting into it. So have you found that your customers are demanding this now and do you anticipate this being a relatively large uh, number of, uh, of your trikes will be coming with the assist? Yeah, I think it will be with trikes at least 10, 20% this year and will grow, I believe. Okay, Hansa, what's going on here? What, what is this uh, part of your display? Yeah, we, we try to, to show how we assemble the trikes in-house because uh, really our, our mechanics starts from scratch so uh, when we receive an order we have a bare frame it goes to painting and then we start to assemble all the components on it mm -hmm. so um, yeah to make it kind of live here and something interesting for the for the visitors so here you can see how the the screws for the or basically nuts are, are pressed into the frame for the folding hinge to be assembled that's a special tool there yes yeah yeah you have to have for for some of the operations you have to have a special special tool and who is this working today yeah mira is uh, our uh, chief mechanic working for for us for last I don't know, Mira, how much? 10 years? Is it 10, 9, something like that? Very long time. A long time, time yeah. yeah. And he is building his own recumbents as well, like a prototypes, different, uh -huh. different, you know, home built projects uh, and so on. So. Not to go into competition with Azo. No, no, no. Oh, I see. Just okay. maybe in many ways helping us, you know, with some solutions. Maybe, and yeah, so some on. ideas he comes up with, you yeah. may be able to implement, huh? Well, oh, we'll he will put, put it together uh, uh, right. oh, the yeah. frame. So this is a separable version, uh, or will be a separable version. Uh, otherwise, if it's foldable, then the folding hinge is uh, in between those two parts. And then there are so the, so the frame is the, the same side. either way. You could retrofit a folding. Yes. Uh, oh, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, it's separable. So if you want to. Mm -hmm fold the if you want to fold the frame maybe once or twice a year for some traveling mm -hmm. you can have it this way separable okay. so not quite or so convenient it, but it still works. yeah yeah it, it, it is a matter of five minutes or so to, to disassemble it maybe a little bit longer to assemble it because everything has to fit together but uh yeah or you can have the folding hinge which is uh, just inserted inside and the folding handlebars there and uh, Yeah, and that's it. That's that it? was pretty interesting part of the assembly, I guess. Yeah, that was very nice. Okay, <laughs> that's Hans Agala. Aza, thank you very much for uh, all of everything you, you do. Thank you for coming. Okay, Have sure. A thanks. Nice day. You too. Okay, we're here with uh, Karsten at the Schwabi booth, uh, and we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to talk tires. So, of course. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Karsten, uh, can you tell us a little bit uh, about your line of tires for recumbent bikes? Yeah, um, I think we have a lot of tires for recumbent recumbent bikes. Um, you see them over here, two complete tire racks, all filled with 20-inch tires. I think there's no other manufacturer who has that many tires for 20-inch. The most um, popular one for the customers over here is the Marathon Plus. It's a really 
heavy tire, but it's also the most durable tire and the most puncture-proof tire that you can get for this kind of bicycle. So that is our real bestseller. Okay, and let's talk uh, maybe performance a little bit. For those uh, guys that are looking for a little bit high performance uh, tire, what do you have for that? Well, for really high, high-end performance is the tire that I have over here. It's the Schwalbe Pro One. It's a, well, it's a road racing tire. It was just a nice test in uh, Bike Radar where they found out that it's the fastest road racing tire that you can get in the moment. And we have this tire also in uh, 20 inch. And the secret behind it is it's a tubeless tire. So it's uh, really, well, for this kind of bicycles, a real new technology. Yeah, tubeless is getting to be more and more popular. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, talk about some of your other tires that have been around. Uh, so um, how about the, uh, the Triker? Now, the, that's something that in the US we've seen a bit on all the trikes that are being sold. So um, what, what is the Triker? How does the Triker differ from the standard tire? Why is it special for trikes? The so Triker has a different has a different uh, different shape. It's more flat, which is well for trike. Trike makes more sense than a than a balloon tire. And the second thing is um, well, it's a compound of the tire, which is well a very fast compound, but also especially on a trike, a very very durable compound. Maybe this is a good time to ask you about. Uh, the special things uh, that separate Schwabi tires from other manufacturers. So, um, what is it that makes the Schwabi tire, in your estimation, uh, stand out from any other tires that are out there for the bikes? Well, there, we have a lot of different different tires, but but Schwabe as a manufacturer, the biggest difference for me is we make only bicycle tires. We don't make any other parts on the bicycle. We don't make rims. We don't make bicycles. We make only tires. And we also make no car tires or motorcycle tires, anything. We are completely specialized on bicycle tires. And well, that's our business. And 24 hours, we only think about how to make a bicycle tire even better, even more puncture proof, even, even faster. What can you do to make the performance even, uh, even better? And yeah. So you have that loyalty to the bikers. And, and I think, from my experience, that's returned. I, I see. I, I see many bikers that are very loyal to the Schwabi tires. So that's nice to know. What about uh, the future? You have anything you want to talk about? Maybe what might be coming up? Uh, tell us what you might have uh, on the drawing board right now. Well, right now the newest thing is still uh, the tubeless te technology. Is something that is just just presented, where we see a. Uh, a big, a big future, especially if you look about the performance of a tire. You have a lot of advantages with this. You have a tire that is that is faster. The rolling resistance is a lot lower than with a regular tire. You have a better riding performance. The comfort is better if you go on rough roads. You have better grip, better control with it, and you also have a, a higher puncture protection than with a regular tire and, and you have a higher safety even even if you have a flat you will have less flats but if you have a flat you will never have a sudden a sudden blowout that you can lose the control over 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 the vehicle so there's a huge safety factor in that obviously yeah. now also we've had a question about uh, the shredder tire I guess and can you tell us a little bit about the uh, what's happening with that well it's gone <laughs> right. it's uh, it's not there anymore we uh, we skipped it out of uh, out of the range. Actually, it was never a tire designed for uh, for uh, recumbents or trikes or velomobiles or, or anything. It was for BMX race. And if Schwalbe is weak in a certain field of cycling, that is BMX. So our directors decided we kind of give up BMX race and skip the complete line. But over here on this show, I don't know, 20 or 30 people asked already what happened to the to the shredder and if, if they could could have it uh, could have it back. So something may happen along this line? I, d I don't think we will bring back the shredder, shredder tires, but um, I, I think I have a pretty good idea already what, what to do to have a real fast and even more special tire for, for recumbents that could make people uh, happy next year maybe. Okay, so stay tuned on that one. So, All right, Karsten, thank you very much. You're welcome.
How's it going? Hey, get on. Hey, yeah, you know what? That would be great. Can I? Uh... Yeah, come on. Lars? Yeah. Would you be able Lars, to take? Come on, get your Let's ass get on in here. It. Come on, bud. Don't block the road as long as possible. And can you? Yeah, if you can ride alongside somebody, hang maybe. On, we... Hang on, I'm not, I'm not in there. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. Okay. Oh, now see if you can pedal. Do you have uh, electronic assist? Oh yeah, he's good. Here we are. We're actually on the parkour course, and uh, riding along with. What's your name, sir? Stefan. Go ahead. My name is Stefan. I'm from Dusseldorf. Stefan from Dusseldorf. And what what are we riding on here? Oh, this is um, what is it? Rad Radkutsche. A Radkutsche. Okay, uh, it's a nice. Uh, we're getting a nice ride here, like a little taxi service. It's is a bicycle Uber. And uh, young lady, could you talk to us? Lars, you won't talk to us. Okay, yeah. So uh, the parkour course uh, is where uh, folks here at Spetsy uh, grab a ride uh, of their choice and try it out. And as you can see. Uh, uh, there are, uh, this gives the opportunity for hundreds of people to get out here and, and try the trikes and the bikes and uh, the unusual bikes like we have right there. Oh, there goes a, there goes a little Haza Pino, Pino, right? Now outside you can see all kinds of things going on. There's a Quattro Velo going around on the outside of the course. Anyways, this, it's a blast and, uh, oh, yeah, we're having a little trouble. Is the, elect is the electric assist giving out? It's your weight. Oh, it's our weight. <laughs> That's just mine. We, yeah, we just, we just had, too late back. we just had a little cooking, and uh, so we're probably a little bit heavier than we would have been if we'd come first. But you're doing great. Thank you for doing this. Hello. Hello. Are you enjoying the ride? Oh yes. <laughs> Can you get? <laughs> but she's behind us. What are you riding? Uh, Under seat steering. Uh, what? Under seat. Oh, yeah, ah. yeah, yeah. Comfortable? Comfortable? Yes. Okay. Thank you. All right. There goes a Zoxy tandem I see over there. This is. Uh... All right. Why don't you uh, come around one more time and drop us off? You're done. I want you to be able to walk for the rest of it. You're doing great. Thank you. <laughs> ah. There we are. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. I appreciate that. Yeah. Get off this way, try not to get killed. All right, next. So uh, we have, uh, what's your name, please? Uh, Grzegorz Antonowicz. I come from Poland on Spesi in this year. Okay, so you're here at Spesi, all the way from Poland. And why are you here at Spesi? Uh, I come here to see what we have new on the recommend market and try other brands like Zox, for example. And so back in Poland, do you have a recumbent bike? Yeah, of course. Uh, I'm a home builder from Poland and uh, I have Four, four bikes what I made, yeah, with full suspension and without suspension, yeah, different type. And so what have you seen so far here that you're interested in, that you might incorporate into your own bikes? Main uh, idea in the bike is uh, construction, yeah, it's geometry. Uh, and sometimes uh, I can see uh, new idea how to um, solve some problems with the chain like on this one so if you're doing a front wheel drive this is something yeah. that you might be able to learn from so yeah. okay well I'll let you get back to riding thank you very much you're welcome okay thanks there he goes crazy rider there he goes oh jeez. <laughs>
Hello, what's your name? Eula. Eula, hi. So you're here testing out some, uh, some bikes uh, at Spetsi. Where are you from? I'm from Paderborn in the west of Germany. Okay, and do you have a recumbent bike right now? No. Okay, so you're just kind of checking them out. So what are you riding here? It's a taxi bike, and I never drove one before with this. Uh, Under seat steering? Yeah. So tell me how you like it. It's great, and it's uh, much more simple than I expected. And, and easier to ride than you thought, huh? Yeah. Okay, very comfortable. Yeah, it's comfortable. Okay. Are you going to be checking out a lot of different bikes today? No, already three. Three, okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, we're outside here of the venue at Spetsi, and uh, we found a very unusual bike and an unusual young lady who I think built this bike. What's your name? Uh, my name is Oriana. Oriana, and where are you from? Uh, Oriana, uh, um, it's French name. I, I'm from France, uh, from Nancy. Okay, and uh, this is your this is your recumbent bike, and did yeah, you? My usual recumbent bike. Yeah. This is what you ride everywhere. Yeah, every day. Everywhere. And uh, did you build this bike? Yeah, it's my first bike uh, I built uh, out of bamboo. It is out of bamboo. So tell me about the process. What did you? Uh, first of all, when did you think about doing this? Where did this idea come from? Um, so a long time ago, I wanted to build a bike out of bamboo um, and especially recommend when I discovered recommend, but I didn't have the skills, so I done it. Uh, I, build, I, bow, I both a, recommend, a normal recommend for several years. And since I was studying, I hadn't the time. And so in the, during uh, one holidays, I've done it. So, uh, where did you learn? Where did you learn how to do that process? Um, I um, I've done uh, material engineering um, studies, and uh, so it helps me a bit. Uh, um, but I mainly uh, looked on the internet and let's try it. <laughs> Very good. Now let's take a look at, at the trike if we could. So you have the bamboo obviously as the part of the frame material and the wheels which is interesting. Now how, do, how is this, uh, how is this the, the joints, how are these fastened? What is this okay. material? Tell me. Uh, they are amp fiber with, um, with our epoxy resin. So that and then the epoxy and you. Yeah. Very, very nice. Now this could not be easy. Tell me about the wheels. It wasn't easy. Yeah. Uh, it took me um, nearly the same time to build the frame and to build the wheels. <laughs> uh, the alignment is the hardest part, yes? Yeah, but I've made done it by a friend who uh, who used to align wheels. 
Um, so that that's the help that you needed to get that completed. So, all right. Now, uh, then, yeah. I, then I cut uh, the, the bamboos exactly the right um, the right length with the right form, so I could glue it uh, between the V hub and the rim, the rim. Mm -hmm. and then uh, I put out the spokes and I have done the composite with uh, carbon fiber from the, the hub on the, to the wheels. Absolutely beautiful. And so this is your regular ride, so you ride this around everywhere. Yeah. It's a front wheel drive, I noticed yeah. too. So tell me about this. Um, I was front wheel drive. In, in general, uh, why? Um, because it's really quiet. You don't have a long chain. Right. Which makes, <laughs> I didn't like it. Right, right. <laughs> Front wheel drive force you to pedal like a professional rider, so with few force but high frequency. And uh, what is interesting is that you can easily uh, ride it freehand. And, uh, Without hands? Yeah, last year I broke my handlebar um, while going to the Spetsy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I ride the hand of a travel. You didn't need a handlebars. No, yeah, no handlebars. <laughs> I just put um, two, uh, these two parts together, and it was like uh, with a PlayStation joystick. Yeah. Just uh, with a cable to the bike, and uh, <laughs> just amazing. Such a beautiful bike. All right, um, and I noticed it's personalized. Like I noticed a little bit of art and that type of thing. Did you do this? Yeah, I like it. <laughs> Sometimes. So it's make it your bike, right? Is that yeah, it is my bike. It is uh, done on my measurement also. So right. nobody can steal it. <laughs> to our, <me>. our <laughs> right. So I can easily ride uh, no from hands. the start. No hands. All right, let's see that. Let's there see. she goes. Yeah, look how she steers with her legs. <laughs> <It's> Lars. <laughs> there she comes. Amazing look. Uh, all right, folks, I guess that's a wrap for the 2017 Spetsy here in Germersheim, uh, Germany. And uh, I want to thank my crew. We have... I'm Lars, hello. I'm Marion, hello. I'm Oliver, hello. I'm Marilyn, hello. And I'm Gary Solomon. This has been the Laid Back Black Report, special from Spetsy. Is the red light on, honestly? Because I want to make sure it it's going. Okay. My name is Rudy from Yalta. That's all right. Ready? Oh, I'm okay. sliding. Wait a minute. <laughs> Everything was great until we started. Uh, are you, because, uh, are you not starting? No, you're starting. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. You're um, Rudy. Yeah, He's okay. Tom. I'm Gary with the yeah, rest of it. Okay. okay. Rudy, Yalta recumbent. I'm Tom Floor from Trident Trikes. And I'm Gary Solomon. We're here in Germersheim, Germany at the Spetsy No. <laughs> and I'm Gary Solomon. We're, we're here in Ger Let's do it right. And I'm Gary Solomon. We're here in Germersheim, Germany at the Laid Down. And I'm Gary Solomon. We're here in Germersheim, Germany. This is the Laid Back Bike Report special from Spetsy. Are you ready, guys? Yes. Let's do it. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> that was a mouthful. Thank you, Brian. Don't worry about that, because I... I'm what should I call you? Gary. And if you need... Uh, what? Uh, I can... He, he closed it. <laughs> oh, okay.
Getting the arms out, right? I'm not going anywhere without that. And then I got to get back on that. Someone's watching you. Oh, hi there, puppy. You can, with your left back. foot, you can put uh, in, in the frame. You can uh, put your left, fo left foot in the frame. Left foot? Yeah. Okay. And then you can push oh, yourself out. Stuff. Yeah, this. Yeah, I don't have that problem, but. No, I know, I do. Okay, but um, I, I cannot. All right. I'm getting there. Yeah. All right. There you are. Now, foot out. Break it here. Yeah, now I've sure don't want to. You but know. <laughs> No, but I, like a tradition, I, to make sure you I started with that, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they have built the, the track around here for, I, they didn't build the track around here. People have been testing out these uh, e-bikes since the 1500s here in Gamersheim. <laughs> but the, the motors have come a long way since then, so. So you have to heat it, as usual, with the sterling. <laughs> and wait a little until it's hot. <laughs> and the wind is going to... But windy. Perhaps if we go down, we have less wind. Come on, <laughs> come on down! <laughs> you, could, you could power it on uh, alcohol, but you need so strong a one to right. that burns. We'll be back next year, maybe yeah. you'll have that working for us. You bring so. some whiskey with but, you. Bring and then, yeah. all we have. <laughs> ah! Okay. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, Tamazada is going to be jumping right from here all the way over here. No, I don't. I don't think I'm going to do this. Ah. There goes Carl George. He's, he's not going down here. He's going to no. He's going to do the same thing. There comes Carl George in his light tray. He's going to jump. Uh oh. oh. <laughs> Wow. So <laughs> if I'm drunken, I'm mutig enough to make race drives against cars on the on the cross. I'm waiting. You, you like the challenge. Red, red, you like the challenge. Yeah. Green. <laughs> and then, no, the, uh, before he makes the window down. Yeah. Oh, you yes, oh, are well, you're staying here on my street. La, la, la. Don't waste my time and so uh, don't. Uh, no, no. Away, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> he can't nah. follow me in the city. Oh, he will go so in prison yeah. because, yeah. <laughs> Okay, we're All right, we're rolling. Okay, we're here at the Bambook booth. Yeah, he can stretch it out so far that she can't whack you in the back of the head. That's a... Oh, she can. Okay. So that's wonderful. So then you have uh, the opportunity to choose uh, your, from your different models and really give you uh, a different uh, look, feel, and, and ride. Uh, excuse me. Uh, <laughs> no, sorry. That was, I guess, a little confusing. Uh, so, uh, you <laughs> have you have available different models that will uh, yeah. that will help you decide what sort of uh, bike you want to uh, want to buy, right? So you have above the seat steering, you have the below yeah. the seat steering. You have uh, different available models for different needs. Yeah, that's it. This is <laughs> okay. This is. I can just do the interview myself. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's my fault. That's that's my fault. Per perfect. Perfect. What are you strange-looking gentlemen doing here? What? What are you guys doing? Spending euros. On what? On bratwurst. Okay. After a hard day of filming, you need some sustenance. Yes, absolutely. After dealing with all those people. Ah. Difficult people. I'm talking about my crew. No. <laughs>